article following the emergency meeting of the National Security Council and Joint Chiefs, Chiefs of Staff called by President Moon Jae-in. We have heard more from the Joint Chiefs of Staff confirming that they believe these were two short-range ballistic missiles. They say they were launched from Hamju in the DPRK, fired into the Eastern Sea, which you can see behind me, traveling at a distance of 450 kilometers and an altitude of about 60 kilometers. It marks the first time, if this indeed were, uh, was a case of ballistic missiles, that such missiles have been fired by the DPRK. So literally just a few days over one year. And it really marks the end of a period of peace. We haven't, uh, diplomatic peace as well. We haven't had uh, really any big firings or any harsh statements in that period. But what we've seen over the last week is finally comments coming from the DPRK, from Kim Jong-un's sister, from the Deputy First Vice Minister, then a cruise missile launch on Sunday, and finally now it seems ballistic missile tests have resumed. The President's office here said it was deeply concerned. We've heard from Japan that it did, they didn't fall within the exclusive economic zone, but Tokyo saying it was a threat to regional peace and security. And we've also heard from the US military saying they believe that these kind of what they called illicit tests are a threat to neighbors and the international community. The United States has already demonstrated it's very keen to talk. Representatives have been reaching out to Pyongyang since February, trying to get working level talks in motion. Uh, but we heard recently from uh, First Vice Foreign Minister of the DPRK, Cho Son Hui, saying there will be no talks with the United States until it ends all hostile policies. And she made it clear that that includes sanctions. Now, that's clearly not something that the Biden team is going to do.